नमस्कार वेलकम टू दिस सेशन ऑन भगवत गीता इन डेली लाइफ टुडे वी शेल बी डिस्कसिंग व्हाट इज हु इज गॉड एंड वेयर डज ही लिव और देयर आर सो मेनी बिलीव्स अबाउट द डिविनिटी हु इज द डिविनिटी वेयर डज ही लिव एंड मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स पीपल फील दैट यू नो पीपल से दैट भगवान तो मंदिर में There are so many people say that Bhagwan the upper wale stays up in the sky. Hey, koi lok mein swarg lok mein rehte hain. Lot of people say that Bhagwan to hamare andar. And then there are some little bit wiser who say that Bhagwan is everywhere, sarvatra. And then there would be some who would say that Bhagwan to mujhe kahi dikhte nahi hai, kahan hai, kahi nahi, shayad hai ki nahi hai. so there are so many beliefs and conceptions misconceptions about god about divinity let us explore one after the other and see what our scriptures tell us what is god who is god what is divinity let us understand so we call it in our scripture as either bhagwan or ishwara bhagwan means one who has six bhaga all the six attributes the characteristics full of knowledge full of grace full of aishwarya full of uh, all the you know gnana everything or ishwara ishwara means one who is ish lord this world one who is the king of this universe he is ishwar most of the times we understand god more as in a form and that's why in our parampara in our lineage the forms are also worshiped undoubtedly it's also important to understand realize that that's not the final or the real swarupa of bhagwan but it is one swarupa which we can associate with we can relate with we can understand we can you know put it our in our life in our practice and this swarupa or which is also called saguna sakar swarupa of the god is also the avatar swarupa like rama krishna Uh, then you know many of other devtas devi devtas like ganesha like uh, you know shivlinga or the linga puja mata ji and all these other swarupa where we worship the lord as or the devtas as a swarupa is a saguna sakar swarupa or the god with a name and a form our scriptures tell us that ishwara is beyond the names and the form and ishwara god is the abhinna nimitta upadana karana of this universe that is what our shastras tell us that is the definition of ishwara that our shastras give us that means it is not just the nimitta nimitta cause means the material cause one who is the creator of this universe one who has created this just like a pot is created by a potter कुंभार जैसे घड़ा बनाता है ऐसे ही भगवान ने ये विश्व ये यूनिवर्स को बनाया है एंड देन अवर स्क्रिप्चर ऑल्सो टेल अस दैट गॉड इज द उपादान का उपादान मींस द मटेरियल कॉज द क्रिएटर डिड नॉट हैव टू गो एनीवेयर टू गेट द मटेरियल फॉर द क्रिएशन ही हिमसेल्फ मैनिफेस्टेड एज अ क्रिएशन एंड दैट इज अ यूनिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग व्हिच अवर स्क्रिप्चर्स ओनली टेल अस दैट ही इज नॉट जस्ट द क्रिएटर बट ही इज पार्ट ऑफ द क्रिएशन And that is how we can understand God as vibhutis in different, 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 different forms. In the tenth adhyaya of Bhagavad Gita, Bhagwan talks about all these. Sri Krishna talks about the vibhuti darshana. And then the virata swarupa or the vishwarupa darshana, which is the eleventh adhyaya of Bhagavad Gita. And then antaryami, Bhagwan says in so many uh, different areas, ritesh arjuna tishtati, that I am sitting inside you, Arjuna, and I, you know, make people go round and round. and then the glory the grace of the god but the final swarupa according to our upanishads the knowledge path vedanta is the nirgun nirakar the formless the unmanifest attributeless no there are no you know attributes chaitanya or atma swarupa or it's also the brahma swarupa so both atma and brahma are chaitanya swarupa But Atma is from the perspective of a Vyakti, from the individual perspective, whereas Brahma is from the universal perspective as a Sarvabhyapak, 
omnipresent, omniscient. And that consciousness, which we call it as Chaitanya or Atma, its Swarupa is Satchit and Ananda Swarupa. That is what our scriptures tell us. So that is the final destination of the Lord. In Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna talks from each of these three perspectives. He talks himself from the perspective of being a Krishna as Avatar Swarupa. He talks himself as being sometimes Ishwar Swarupa, how he is a creator, how everything manifests from him. And sometimes he talks from the Nirgur and Nirakar Chaitanya Swarupa as a Satchit and Ananda Swarupa. And only a learned guru can explain to us how in different shlokas, in different adhyayas, Bhagavan talks from different perspectives so that we can get all the idea and connect all the dots so that we can make one whole vision of Sri Bhagavad Gita rather than making it into compartments and then not understanding them in, in its entirety. So in the fourth Adhyaya, starts with Bhagavan Shri Krishna says Imam Vivaswate Yogam that this knowledge tradition, this yoga parampara, he says starts from me, starts from the Lord. He says this imperishable knowledge I first gave to Vivaswate Bhaktavan and I gave it to Sun. At the beginning of the creation, this yoga Vidya, this Vidya knowledge was given to the Sun. He passed it on to Manu. Manu passed it on to Ishkwaku the king in whose descent dynasty Sri Ram took birth, Ikshwaku. And then listening to this, Arjuna must have thought, how is this possible? Krishna, you have been born just recently, few years ago with me. Of course, they were 90 years old when Bhagavad, when Mahabharata Yudh took place. But you have been born recently, says, Aparam Bhavatu Janma, Param Janma Vibhaswata. Son was born many, many years, thousands of years ago. How is it? How can I understand that you only gave this to son? How is it possible? He asks. And this is the beginning of a little doubt in the mind of Arjuna. He said he has always thought that Sri Krishna is his friend, Sakha. And here he is the charioteer. And now he has already accepted to be a disciple. Shishyas Teham Shadimam Tom Prapannam. In the second Adhyay, he said to Sri Krishna that you please give me guidance. I'm confused, I don't know what is the best thing to do. And now Arjuna has doubt whether Sri Krishna is really God or not. And that's why he wants evidence and to which Bhagavan displaces Ishwar Swarupa and tells him, Bahuni me gatitani, janmani tavacha Arjuna. Oh Arjuna, I have had many, many births previously and you also have had undergone many, many births. Tanyaham veda sarvani. I know about all these births, yours as well as mine. Natvam Vitha Parantapa. Hey Parantapa, hey Arjun, you don't know all these words. That is the difference between Jiva and Ishwara. Ishwara is Sarvagnya, he is the all knower. He knows everything about all the Jiva. Whereas Jiva is Alpagnya, he knows very little. He knows only about this birth. That too, also, we forget so many things about our childhood. And that's why we have a very limited knowledge. And that's why that is the main difference between Jiva and Ishwara. And then in the next two shlokas, which are both very well-known shlokas of Sri Bhagavad Gita, Yada, Yada, He Dharmasya. He says, when does God incarnate? He says, when there, whenever there is decline of Dharma. Dharma means righteousness. What is the right thing to do? And that righteousness to protect this Dharmis. And whenever Planir Bhavati Bharata, when there is, uh, you know, there is increase in Adharma. He says, Apyutthanam Adharmasya. Then I, Radatmanam Sujamiham, I manifest myself he says, there and there I manifest myself. And next, Shloka says, what are the reasons for the God's incarnation? Paritranaya sadhunam. To protect and nurture the sadhu purush, the righteous puru, people. Vinashaya chidushkrutam. To destroy the adharmis as Sri Krishna did it by destroying, by killing Kansa and then, you know, the Kauravas. Whereas as Rama Uttar killed Ravana. So all these adharmis were destroyed. And that is one of the purpose of incarnation. And Dharma Sanstapan Arthai, to re-establish the Dharma, Dharma as a, you know, as a, as the base of our human existence. Sambhavami Yuge Yuge, I incarnate whenever needed. Yuge Yuge does not mean every Yuga, he only gets one avatar. He may have three or four avatars in a Yuga also. So that is when, whenever needed, God will incarnate. That is his own sweet little wish whenever he wants to incarnate. But this is the most beautiful shloka which presupposes these two well-known shlokas. Bhagavan says, Ajopi Sanna Yavaya. He says, what is the original form of the God? 
says, even though I am ajaha, ajaha means I am unborn, B, avyaya atma, I am eternal. There is no vyaya, there is no destruction, there is no change. I am Brahma Swarupa, I am Nirgun Nirakar. Bhutanam Ishwaropi San. And I am the Lord of all the beings, I am the Ishwara. Even then, Prakrutim Swamadishtaya, I take help, control, uh, help of Maya, who is under my control. Sambhava Myatma, Atma Maya. That means, Bhagavan says, I incarnate, I manifest with this help of the Maya, I take this incarnation, I take his birth. Because Nirgun Nirakar, how can he take a birth? How can he become full of attributes, guna, and he has to take help of this maya only then. And that is how the difference is that Bhagwan has complete control over the maya. That is, Brahma has complete control over the maya. Brahma, Shraya, maya, that's why it is called. Whereas Jiva is under the control of this maya. Because we don't have full control and understand the maya. And that's why we get all these pain, miseries in our life. And with this power of own maya, creative energy, God takes the birth. So Jiva is born due to his or her own actions, Krakrutva, Ahankara, Agnana, Ignorance. That is how this Sansara Chakra keeps on going on. But Bhagwan does not have to go through all this because he is full of knowledge. He takes birth whenever he is, if there is need, need in this universe and then he does not have to come back again according to his karma. His karmas don't bind him because he is full of knowledge. And in this fourth Adhyaya Shloka Brahmarpanam Brahmahavihi Brahmahagnav Brahmanavatam this shloka we chant before eating in our Shastra, in our lineage, that everything is Brahma, everything is one. The meaning of this shloka is everything is one. Whatever objects you use, Yuri Yagna, all the materials or the Samadhi you offered, the fire in which it is offered, in the Yagna, the Yajman who sits and does this Yagna, and all the fruits that we get in, karma, in, in this Yagna, everything is Brahma. So the wise man who does action with Karma is also Yagna. Is also Brahma. So everything is Brahma. That is the meaning of this. That Bhagwan is one. It is omnipresent. It is all pervading. And Bhagwan in the sixth Adhyaya says that Yo Mam Pashyati Sarvatra, one who sees me everywhere, because I I am everywhere, but most of the people cannot see Lord everywhere. Sarvam Chamai Pashyati and sees everything within me. Asya Ham Napranashyami that I am always there for that person. Nachame Sapranashyati Nai. Never, I always remain very close to that person. God itself is a truth. The truth is one, and God is one, is all pervading. That is the understanding. And then in the seventh Adhyaya, Bhagavan again says, Matta Parataram Nanyak. Behind all the names and forms, you must try to see me. I am there. He says, There is nothing more than me to be known in this universe. And Idam Sarvam Mai Protam. Everything is woven within me. Everything, yeah, I am there. You just have to unfold me. Everywhere, Isha Vasimidam Sarva Mahaprabhu also tells us that everything is pervaded by this Lord. You try to see this in this world. Sutre Madigana Yuva. He gives an example and says how all the beads are there in one string. You can't see the string, but all the beads of different colors, different shapes, different sizes, different forms are there, which are knitted in one bead. And that is how I live in this world. Everywhere, as Sutre Madigana Yuva, as a bead. On the string and he says i'm there everywhere and why everybody is not able to see the lord even though the lord is everywhere the seventh day he tells Kamai stay jnana. by all our insects and desires we all keep going around searching for truth happiness and pleasures and that's why the self-knowledge which is inside is not is not you know illuminated it is not seen it is completely hidden, it gets destroyed, he says. And keeping this, we have a lot of desires to get all the material success and that's why we pray to many, many devtas to fulfill our desires. According to their natures, the devtas, we follow a lot of rituals and rules so that we can get some material success. And Jiva does not know me because of Maya. He shows also the solution. He says, Daivi Yashagunamai, this Maya, which is my own, it is Daivi. And it consists of these three gunas. That's how the God incarnates on this universe, takes birth. Mama Maya Duratyaya. This Maya is very difficult to understand, to overcome. For most of the humans, it is our experience that it is very difficult to get across this Maya. A lot of times we say that this Maya or this Mohkahi Sakura Chakra. Hai. But Bhagavan shows the solution. 
माम एव ये प्रपंचते द वन हु टेक्स माय शेल्टर ओनली दैट पर्सन इज एबल टू क्रॉस माया ए ताम तरंतिते इट्स ओनली अबाउट गेट्स अक्रॉस दिस संसार चक्र माया इट्स समथिंग लाइक अ मैजिशियन इन द मैजिक शो ओनली द मैजिशियन अंडरस्टैंड्स हिज मैजिक शो द पीपल हु आर हु आर द स्पेक्टेटर्स दे डोंट अंडरस्टैंड दिस मैजिक ओनली द मैजिशियन अंडरस्टैंड्स माया इज समथिंग लाइक दिस इट्स अ बिग मैजिक शो दैट इज हैपनिंग and it is very difficult to understand mamma maya drutya and bhagwan says one who comes to my shelter maya me tam tarantite gets across this maya and it is something like a fisherman when he puts out the net to catch the fishes the fishes which are near the 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 shelter of the fisherman very close to his legs one who are surrendered to him those are the ones who are saved because they don't get into this net similarly this sansar net is something that is far and wide only those people who remain in the shelter of the lord can get across this mara in the seventh adhyay again bhagwan shows that he is sarvagna he is all over veda ham samati tan he says arjuna i am over of all this vartamani cha bhavishyani cha bhutani the past the present and the future of all the beings whatever karma we do whatever are our attitudes everything is known by the god because god is the all over मां तू वेद न कश्चन बट नो बडी नोज मी कंप्लीटली भगवान टेल्स अर्जुन एंड भगवान आल्सो इन द नाइंथ अध्याय सेज हाउ इज ओमनी प्रेजेंट एंड इज अनसीन ही सेज माया ततम इदम सर्वम एवरीथिंग इन दिस वर्ल्ड इज परवेडेड बाय बी एंड देयर एवरीवेयर इन दिस वर्ल्ड अव्यक्त मूर्ति ना पाया इन एन अनमैनिफेस्ट फॉर्म एंड दैट्स व्हाई नॉट बीइंग सीन क्लियरली मोस्ट ऑफ द पीपल आर नॉट एबल टू सी मी मत स्थाने सर्व भूतानि ही सेज ऑल बीइंग्स आर विद इन मी nachateshu aham avastita but i am not in them i am completely unattached to everyone though they are all within me i am unattached to everyone in the full scope again in the ninth adhyaya bhagwan says how is the creator of this universe he says sarva bhutani kaunteya prakrutim yanti pamikam all these beings dissolve into my prakriti at the end of the universe kalpakshay and kalpa ado kalpa ado means at the beginning of the universe visru jami aham puna so everything is created again and again and that is how this cycle goes on and on aya laya again there is a creation again there is dissolution of the universe and this cycle keeps on going on only the god remains and that's how the shloka that we speak purasya purna madaya purna meva vishishyate purna everything comes from the purna and everything is purna even then what is what is uh, you know which is what is taken away from the purna still purna remains And that is what is is the Brahma Swarupa, the Satchi Tananda Swarupa of the Ishvara. So Brahma plus Maya is equal to Ishvara, and Ishvara is the Srusti, Upati, Pralaya, Laya. All this, everything happens within Ishvara. And this Maya is also under the control of the Brahma, Amma Shwaya Maya. God says, Prakrutim Swama Vastabhya. I control my Mama Maya, Isru Jami Puna Puna, and I create this universe again and again. Bhut Gramam Imam Krutsnam. All these living beings. avasham praktir vasha who have no control over the maya have to carry out their work life job according to whatever karma they have until the time they have and ishvara is only swatantra completely independent whereas jiva is paratantra based on our own past karma we have to end and they are everything in this life bhagwan says that very few people know me as my true nirguna swarupa avajananti ma mudham most of the ignorant people don't know me completely manushin tanu nashrit he says they believe that i am only this human form when i take incarnation they see me and they believe that i am this limited to this body birth death param bhava vachanam to they don't know my real swarupa the one says my real swarupa is mama bhuta maheshwaram i am the lord of all these beings and that is what they and that is because of the moha this uh, agnan which is the root cause of all these problems that is what our vedant teaches us and how can we start seeing the divinity everywhere in the 10th adhyaya which is a vibhuti yoga adhyaya bhagwan starts showing the description and he starts saying that aham atma guda kesha he says sarva bhuta shaya stitah i am your atma i am your chaitanya i am nothing different from you arjuna by your swarupa we are both the same he says sarva bhuta shaya stitah i am the cause of this world and whenever we think about the world we can think about the ishwara because from the laya prakriya the karana karana karya sambandha if you see everything is merges into the lord 
and he said, I'm the origin, I'm the present, and I'm the end of all the beings. And that is how he starts with Vibhuti description. And then he goes on to describe his Vibhutis in several other areas. Finally, he says, I am Mrityu Sarvahara Pascha. Bhagavan says, I am also the death. I destroy everything. I steal everything at one point of time in a split second. The entire body, Nashwara Sharira is gone. He says, Udbhava Chabhavishatam. And what is needed to be created in the future? Also, I am their Kirti. All the fame, the wealth, whatever you see in this earth, all the material possessions. He says, Vak, that Vak, that uh, speech. Some people have a very glorious speech. They have a very prolific speech. And all this comes from the Lord. It is all the grace of the Lord that we get all these things. He says, all that we see is from and is God. The one tells Arjuna, that, oh Arjuna, I am the seed. Sarva Bhutanam Bijam. I am the Bij from which all this, everything develops. And there is nothing in this world, either chara, achara, which is separate from me. Everything I am in world, I am engrossed, I am woven into everything in this world. And then Bhagavan tells Arjuna, finally, that all my manifestations of divinity are limitless. There is no end to my vibhuti. He says, there is no end to my divine manifestations. Whatever I have told you is just one part of it. I cannot describe it completely, Bhagavan tells him. And finally, he says that... Whatever you see, whatever glory you see, wherever you see any prosperity, wealth, enthusiasm, energy, all this enthusiasm, everything, try to understand that it is all my powers. It's a very small ansha of my powers. From my energy, everything comes out. Don't have a lot of, you know, ego for your own possessions. Try to understand that all these powers come from that same divine powerhouse. And finally, in the last book of the 10th, Adhyaya says, Athava Arjuna, ho, ho Arjuna, what is that for you to understand better than this? Just try to understand the summary that whatever you are saying, this entire universe is just one very small ansha, small part of my divine self. He says, this is just one aspect you are seeing and whatever you see in this world, you see me everywhere. That is that. And then in the 11th Adhyaya, Arjuna now has a desire. He wants to see the divine manifestation, the Vishwarupa of Bhagavan Shri Krishna. And he says, if you believe that I am able to see, I am eligible to see this divine Swarupa, O Lord, of all the yogis, please manifest. Please show me your perennial, your avya form, your Atmanam, your Vishwarupa. He, he requests to the Lord. And then he puts this request in the feet of the Lord. And immediately, Lord, who is so graceful, agrees and accepts Arjuna's request. And he says, Yes, Arjun, now I'm ready. I'll show you all my hundreds and thousands of different forms, all the divine forms you will see at one place of different colors, different shapes, everything. And in this Vishwarup, you'll be able to see all these bodies, all the different species. You shall see at one place all the Sachara, Charachara, Jagata, moving, non-moving things, everything at one place. Apart from this, whatever you wish to see, you can see in this Vishwarupa Darshana. But he tells Arjuna that only with divine eyes, with Divya Chakshu, you can see this Vishwarupa. Without this, you cannot see this. The meaning is that only we have a purified mind, we can see the Lord everywhere. Unless we have a purified mind, we cannot see the Lord everywhere. And then he tells, okay, I will give you the divine eyes. He gives Divya Dadami Che Chakshu. He gives the divine Chakshu, Divya Chakshu to, to Arjuna so that he is able to see this divine splendor of the Lord. And then Lord becomes silent and shows him all his different forms, all his different, different forms. And finally, he shows him also some ferocious form of the Lord, which Arjuna now starts trembling. He's never seen Lord Krishna or Bhagavan in, it, in this avatar, in this way, how he's going to become a destroyer. Oh, greatest of all devas, please have mercy on me. I want to know who you really are. I've never seen you like this in a very fearsome way. And Bhagavan tells Arjuna in his cosmic form, in his Vishwarupa, he says, Kalosmi, Kala Asmi, I am the death personified. All the destruction that you see is also because of me. And this is something very difficult for us to understand. We see God as a creator. But when we are told that God is also the destroyer, when we see so many deaths, destruction happening, and when somebody tells us, oh, this is all part of divinity, this is all there to create the balance on this universe, we sometimes do not able to understand. Bhagavan himself says, that Kala Ashmi, I work to destroy the people so that I'm in action to massacre people, he says. And 
all the warrior warriors in the opposite camp if you see they are all been destroyed by me they were not going to remain in the future and going to be destroyed and arjuna sees that all the drona bishma everybody is entering the mouth of the lord and he's just eating them chewing them and this they are all destroyed and then shri krishna tells arjuna tasmatvam uttishta yashola basva therefore arjuna get up and fight this war this dharma yuddha yashola basva you achieve the fame whatever has happened is already going to happen you win over the enemies and you enjoy this prosperous kingdom and work and you have to kill those people who have already been killed by me i have already done the job you just have to do it as a nimitta matra bhava nimitta matram bhava sabhya sachin shri krishna tells arjuna that you be an instrument whatever needs to be done you do it don't have too much of sadness ego miseries that you are that person who is doing all this all this has already happened and with this understanding we need to do our actions and finally now arjuna wants to see krishna in his chaturbhuja his saumya shanta swarupa because he is now trembling seeing lord krishna in this very ferocious form he says show me your chaturbhuja swarupa i want to see the original form of yours with thousand hands in cosmic form he says and manifest your original chaturbhuja form to which bhagwan now comes back to his chaturbhuja form and tells arjuna that's only by bhaktya tvaya ananyaya ananya bhakti the only one pointed devotion is the only way for one says to see me in this this divine splendor this vishwarupa darshana oh great warrior and to know me to see me and to understand me in reality there is only one sadhana and that is bhakti devotion to the lord utter respect complete surrender to the lord is the only way to understand the lord completely in the 14th adhyaya bhagwan says that nature is a universal mother and god is a universal father he says sarva yoni shu murtaya all these wombs that you are seeing beings which are created from these wombs the prakriti the nature is the greatest of all wombs brahma mahatyoni and he says aham bija pradapita i am the father who plants the seed for all these beings and he is the universal father uh, for all the beings and in the 15th adhyaya which is also called the purushottama yoga bhagwan also gives description of his own uttam purusha he says i am different from a shara Shara means all that can be destroyed, all these bodies that we can see, the stool, the sharira, all this that can that will come to an end one day. He says, "I am different from this, and I am also higher than the akshara purusha. Akshara purusha is all the sukshma sharira's, or all the maya. We can say that is akshara, which we cannot cannot be described. It is eternal, and then therefore he says, 'Loke cha vedya cha in world and in Vedas, I am known as purushottama.' Says the fifteenth adhyay is devoted to this purushottama yoga." the one gives a self introduction and says who he is he is beyond this and what is the benefit of knowing this purushottama in his real form the one says oh arjuna this is the most profound secret that i have told you this atma gnana that i have given you and this has been told to you by myself no one no one else and one who knows this is indeed the intelligent person that real intelligence our intelligence is to know this uh this spiritual knowledge this divine knowledge that bhagwan is given and that person becomes complete in all respects is paripurna he is nirapeksha he has no expectations is krutakrutya he has all gratitude for whatever he has completely and he feels completely fulfilled he is a kamhata he does not have any kamana does not have incessant desires and that is what is our understanding it should be our understanding so finally coming to the end of this session god ishwara is a bhinna nimitta upadana karana is a creator and the material cause of the creation everything comes from him he has been the creator like an instrumental cause like a ghada which is a pot which is created by the potter similarly bhagwan is a upadana karana the material cause of the creation is part of the creation itself so not just he is a creator but he is a creation also god has created this universe as an instrumental cause and god manifests everywhere in this creation as a material cause it is up to us how to see this divine divinity everywhere in this creation and all both these forms of god are one they are not separate there is only one abhinna and this uh, uh, the one of the examples given in our upanishads is like a spider or uh, the spider creates a web from his own saliva and swallows the web after the job is done so the spider is the nimitta karana is the creator of the web and also uses his own saliva that's why is a upadana karana for creating the web and then he swallows the web after the job is done similarly ishwara creates the 
Jagata and then dissolves the Jagata when the job is done. So there is one divinity that is a final vision of our Vedanta. That behind all the Ishvara, Universa, Jagata and the Jiva, behind all these things, there is just one Tattva, there is a Chaitanya Swarupa, we can call it Atma Swarupa, we can call it Brahma Swarupa, we can call it Bhagwan, we can call it Ishvara, we can give different names, but that divinity is one and that is the crux of uh, our Vedanta. So we come to the end of the session. I pay my gratitude and respects to the Lord with whose grace everything is possible. I pray to this Guru Shishya Parampara through which this knowledge is preserved and transmitted. I pay my respects to my Guruji Puchya Guru Ma, with whose grace I am able to learn the scriptures, share this understanding with you. Om Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Tego Maheshwara Guru Sakshat Parakramha Tasmai Shri Guru Venamha Om Shanti Shanti Shanti